So if there's one thing we all know about software, it's that if you build it, they will come, right? <laughs> well, not exactly. I'm Brandon Walter. I work in corporate IT at Cerner, where I have responsibility for cloud native adoption, a couple of product teams, as well as uh, running our API program. And what I really want to do today is just share some experiences and some lessons learned, uh, basically since we've been executing over the last 14 months. But first, who is Cerner? So Cerner's a $5.5 billion a year company. Uh, we're in the healthcare IT space. We're a global company. We do business in over 35 countries now. We're about 29,000 associates. So when I, I talk about me being in corporate IT, uh, those 29,000 associates, those are my clients. We're, we have over 3 million users. Uh, of our clinical software in over 27,500 different provider facilities. Uh, because our time is pretty limited today, I'm only going to briefly cover on the things that led to us building the program. Uh, I feel like they're contextually important uh, to cover uh, for the rest of the presentation, but uh, unfortunately we don't have a lot of time to unpack all of that. Uh, so I'm gonna start with a quick video uh, this is a video that we put together uh, to help people understand the problem that we were trying to solve. And this is Bob. There's supposed to be sound, but the sound's not working right now. So try to read along. It's really catchy in the background, I promise. The ODS is a reporting database for context here. So we went on to create uh, a couple more videos. There were three in, in total in the series. Uh, and again, we did that uh, partially for marketing collateral. Uh, we knew that we needed to start to get this message out and, and help people understand some of the challenges that we were having. And so we, we started working on a plan to actually go out and, and help Bob. And so one of the very first things that we did uh, is we knew that we needed to form an API program. And as a part of that program, the very first thing we did was we identified some program values that were important to us. And these were focused on the challenges and the problems that we were actually trying to solve for. So you can see that experience is in the center of that. We knew that experience uh, at the end of the day was something that was most important to our clients and, and most important to associates within Cerner. And then agility, security, and reliability um, were the other big things. So if you go back to the Bob video, right, he was, he was trying to be agile. Uh, he wanted to build an application and he was trying to get the data and the quickest way for him to get that data was just to connect directly to a reporting database and snag it. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't scale very well. And that's a big part of how Cerner uh, did integration for the better part of a decade. So we're spending a lot of time with the API program and, and trying to untangle that. Uh, because it was a reporting database, uh, Bob had some reliability challenges within his application and his end users were getting frustrated. Uh, because the data was, was pushed and, and flattened uh, into a reporting database, it also may not have been the most secure. Uh, this is kind of the North Star for our program. Uh, we, we refer back to this a lot, and since day one, this has not changed. So uh, it's really easy to make decisions that are on the outside of this, but as you work your way uh, toward the center of that, the heart of it, if you will, uh, it gets very, very, very challenging. Um, but we try to make decisions consistently 
that operate right in the middle of all those values. Uh, we went to an, uh, an API conference uh, pretty early on when we were trying to form the program, and the big takeaways here, so developer experience, which I talked about a little bit, uh, we knew quality was, was gonna be an important aspect of it. Uh, integrations were not consistently done, so we knew that uh, we needed to close the gap on some quality challenges. We knew that we needed a platform to be able to share, protect, and analyze our APIs, and that it was gonna be important uh, to have an API management platform as well. And we knew the architecture, so building these things in a reliable and scalable way uh, was important as well. And probably the biggest takeaway from the conference was that an API is a product, and that product is consumed by developers. So the next thing we did was we formed a program structure. We were trying to figure out how do we actually go about executing on this. We, we understand kind of the components at play here. Uh, we knew, again, that API management was gonna be a, a major part of that, and we chose WSO2 as our partner in that space after evaluating uh, quite a number of them, I think pretty similar to Glenn and, and what he shared in his experience. Uh, and really, this, the scope of what we were trying to solve here included about 8,000 developers within Cerner. And then ADS modernization. So ADS stands for Application Data and Service Modernization. Uh, we thought about service, application, and data, but SAD wasn't a very compelling acronym. <laughs> uh, Pivotal is a, a big partner for us in this space, um, but essentially this, this pillar was all about, it was about building cloud native, it was about API first, it was about architecture, uh, containers, things like that. And this was really within, the scope of this was in my 600 person organization, uh, which has about 200 developers within it. Um, I manage a centralized integration team, or at least I did when I started on this team two years ago. And in order for us to improve our agility as a company, uh, we manage over 300 different corporate applications within that 600 person organization. Um, you cannot integrate 300 applications with 10 people very well, not very quickly. Uh, so it goes back to what Nuwam was talking about, right? Trying to decentralize those integration capabilities. And then strategy and governance were gonna be an important aspect as well. Uh, again, strategy, uh, a lot of those things that we covered on the previous slide, and it encompassed people, process, and technology. And then from a governance perspective, uh, again, going back to those quality challenges, we knew we needed to create some standards and, and start to um, set some guidelines in order to help make those other developers successful. So at this point, we had our program pretty much all planned out. We, we had a plan, and so we started executing. And we started by making some UX customizations. Again, dev experience, we, we knew that that was like priority number one, right? So we said, well, let's go make our API management portals amazing. Uh, we went, we cleaned them up a little bit. These are actual screenshots uh, from, from what's live in production today. Uh, you can see it looks quite a bit different than the WSO2 skins out of the box. So we did those UX customizations. Uh, we put in subscri subscription workflows. Uh, we knew that uh, it was gonna be important that as people were discovering these APIs, they were gonna want access to them, so being able to facilitate that uh, transaction between uh, the API owners and those wishing to consume. And then we improved the search. Uh, we started to do some type ahead search capabilities and some dynamic searching so that as you're, you're typing in the box, um, it automatically returns the results. Fast forward three months later, uh, our program actually began in August of last year, so this was about November of last year, and I was due to give an update to my executive leadership sharing our progress and how we were doing. Now, I've redacted some of the actual goals, but this was the general message. Um, we, and to just kind of give a little bit of context here, we didn't set very aggressive goals for the first year. Um, we really just wanted to focus on getting started and getting some experience under our belt. So we were 60% to target with one month to go in the year uh, as far as APIs published, 67% of the way there for subscriptions, and 0.1% of the way there for transactions. That was embarrassing. We were missing the mark so badly. And we had to take a step back at this point in time and ask ourselves why. And it's because we weren't really focused on the people. We said we were focused on experience, but just going out and building applications and creating a good experience doesn't get you there. That's not the only thing that goes into dev experience. This is Kauffman Stadium. This is home of the, the Royals in Kansas City, where I'm from. 
And the stadium holds about 37,000 people. And so perhaps the reason that we're avoiding the conversation is because to take a team of 10 or 15 engineers and try to lead a transformation for this many people is a daunting task. So we allowed ourselves to get a little bit distracted by building things instead of enabling people. So we updated the program structure. We specifically carved off uh, and added enablement into that rightmost section and move strategy into its own pillar underneath. And we took it pretty seriously. Uh, we decided that we needed to do actual enablement. So this is Nuan striking young gentleman in the back. He made three trips out to Kansas City at various campuses that we had. And we trained over 90% of US development in my organization uh, by putting together API and cloud native workshops. Nuan and the WSO2 team uh, were imperative in not only forming and building the content, but again, in coming on site and facilitating, uh, bringing swag, food, different things like that. And it just speaks to the level of partnership that we get out of uh, WSO2. There's also a link at the bottom here. So uh, feel free to take a picture of this. Uh, there's, um, I'll share the links at the end as well of the presentation. But you can go out, you can see the agenda. If you think this is something that your organization needs, uh, we have the agenda, we have the content, uh, and you can see how, how we actually built the workshop and take bits and pieces for yourself. The next thing we did is we formed some API guidelines. This is an actual screenshot of, of what that looks like. Now, ours is in a private repo, but Adidas was our inspiration for building these API guidelines. And we took about 60 or 70% of the content that they originally put together. And theirs is publicly available, so I put a link to theirs at the bottom here. And we created a slew of documentation. We embedded it directly in the tool. We wrote blogs, uh, sometimes more frequently than others, but we're probably averaging about once a month. We'll talk about things like security best practices. Uh, we have a number of video tutorials that we've put together. Um, so not everyone just wants to sit there and you know, read your 10,000 word wiki page. It's not always the most exciting thing to do as a developer. Although I will say developers will beat you up when you don't have documentation. <laughs> so those video tutorials is things like how to publish an API, how to subscribe to an API. And we did some pair programming. More on this in a little bit. So if you build it and enable the people, then they will come. Well, sort of. It was definitely better. We were starting to get some adoption, uh, definitely within our organization. And to our surprise, uh, the word was starting to get out a little bit, just word of mouth. Uh, Kansas City, uh, for Cerner, has five different campuses around the metro. Um, so the word was starting to get out a little bit. Uh, we unexpectedly saw some adoption outside of other orgs, which was not, not really intended, but kind of cool. I want to talk about feedback loops. This is my six-month-old Parker. Uh, two weeks ago, we were taking our first family vacation to DC, and it was quite the adventure. Uh, we were walking just west of the Capitol, which you can see in the background. We saw this cool little pond. It was a beautiful day, so we decided to walk down there and check it out. And we saw these little ducks. And Parker has never seen ducks. This is his first encounter. And uh, it didn't go great, I guess. Um, he's, <laughs> he's pretty upset about those ducks. Um, but it's, it's a feedback loop, right? Anyone that has kids knows that they either smile or they cry. But it lets you know that you know, they're either unhappy or that they need something from you. And we liked how our goals helped us initially, right? When, when we saw that we were to 0.1% of our target for transactions in the previous year, at the end of 2018, uh, one, we should have been watching that a little bit more closely, but we still liked that we had that feedback loop. So the first thing we did at the beginning of 2019 is I got together with my team and we set aggressive adoption goals, and these are the areas that we measured. Um, we actually added API calls greater than 20,000 calls a day uh, as part of our criteria because we didn't just want people publishing uh, these APIs, we wanted to make sure that they were getting some use as well, and, and substantial use. Uh, these are all in a, a company accessible location. Uh, we um, have also automated the collection of these using WSO2's APIs. And this is the number one feedback loop for the program. This tells us how we're doing. I told the team, too, uh, I mentioned that we set them aggressively, but I told the team if they're all green at the end of the year, we didn't challenge ourselves enough. And if they're all red, I set us up for failure. 
This is a time series view of the same data. So this just allows us to really identify trends that we're seeing. This is the actual data. I've redacted the, the numerical data out of here. Um, but you get the idea. You can see the growth pattern. So this is also helpful, helpful for uh, capacity planning and things of that nature. And this one is my very favorite. We can slice and dice it by organization. We can drill up and down organizationally. And it helps us identify who is on the right track and who needs help. So tying the feedback loops back to the enablement, this shows us who we need to focus on. It's probably one of my biggest takeaways for the day. Uh, if you're trying to drive an API program, you need this feedback. This feedback is, is extremely important to getting to success. So if you build it and enable the people and have feedback loops, they will come. But only a few groups knew we existed at this time. So we built a brand. Now we chose the Atom for a couple of reasons. The Atom is essential to life, and it's also representative of integration. Neutrons, protons, electrons. The small nature could be representative of microservices as well. And then we came up with the name Rapid. I, I honestly just typed words with API in them in Google. And this is one of the first things that came up. And I was like, wow, that's perfect. This is really easy. I should get into marketing. <laughs> but we, we really liked it because Rapid's also, you know, it's, it's clearly reflective of speed. And API is in the center of the word, just like we want APIs to be in the center of everything that we do. We then set out and we started to do a lot of marketing. We created laptop stickers things like the Bob videos. I have two gentlemen on my team. Their names are Brett and Garrett. And if you say that quickly enough, it starts to sound like Bert and Gert. Brett is uh, an, an artist and has quite a bit of uh, artistic ability. And he's also very creative. And so he put together comics, uh, which I'll share more on here in a moment. In the top right there, you see uh, Aditya and myself, uh, one of the engineers on my team, uh, we presented at our internal development conference. And that internal development conference has about 6,000 of Cerner's engineers. So remember, I said that the, the scope of that was about 8,000. Now, we didn't hit all 6,000 of them, but we hit a lot of them. And just in general, we have a lot of meetings. Um, I'm constantly giving updates. Uh, the folks on my team are constantly working with others. So here's one of the examples of the Bert and Gert comics. This was actually the very first one. You can see that Bert is pretty jazzed about his ping pong API until he realizes that one already existed in the Rapid store. <laughs> People in our org were setting OAuth tokens to never expire. And so Brett created this one called the Tokens Are Broken. It shows Bert and Gert hanging onto the token for its lifetime and theirs. And this is the most recent one, a little bit of toilet humor. And where do you think we put it? Yep. <laughs> right on the bathroom stall door. Here's some other creative marketing that we've done. Uh, we created a model that you see on the far left there. And this is representative of kind of car manufacturing and, and that whole life cycle. So it shows them moving from publisher to the store. Uh, the store was representative of kind of like a car dealership. So you go in, you have your subscription, and then you're ready to head on the highway with traffic, right? And there was a little, uh, you got metered as you came on, so you had to be careful not to get rate limited. We had a selfie booth at an expo as well. Um, these guys don't look particularly excited to be there, but um, we published uh, a, an API uh, that allowed us to upload a selfie to an S3 bucket. And we've done a lot of marketing globally as well. Remember I said that Cerner is a global company. We have offices in 35 countries. I have a small team in Bangalore of six associates. Uh, you can see in the top right there, they had built a model uh, as well. And probably my favorite picture here is the one in the top middle. And the reason why it's my favorite is because the two associates on the far right aren't associates on my team. Remember when I talked about pair programming? Well, as part of our enablement, in India, we, my team there has been pair programming with other teams. And not only are we decentralizing the ownership of that integration, but they're helping us market the platform now. So if you build it and enable the people 
and have feedback loops and spread the word, they will come. But publishing stalled out in our target org, which quite honestly just left me feeling like this. This was the low point in the program for me. Uh, I, I was just frustrated, right? We've done, we've done all this work. We've put in all this time. Uh, actual engineering was happening behind all of this too, right? We still had all of our, our normal day jobs. We were still doing project work. Um, we were still building and, and doing work on the WSO2 platform as well. And it was just really challenging for me. But remember feedback loops? We realized that we were approaching things a little bit too broadly and that we weren't taking time to understand why some people weren't publishing. So we set up some meetings to chat with those folks. Uh, the gentleman on the far left here, uh, if you're familiar with uh, Tanium, it's a command and control tool. It has a lot of administrative capabilities. It can do a lot of very powerful and dangerous things. They have an API, and we tried to get them to publish it. And they said, absolutely not. No way. We can't. It's, it's too dangerous. And so we took time to explain how Rapid can actually help them secure their APIs. We talked about OAuth. We talked about RBAC controls uh, within WSO2 itself. We talked about encryption. And we had the added benefit that when we were initially standing up the platform, we worked very closely with their director to make sure we were building it as secure as possible. And because he knew the amount of, of time and attention to detail that we put into it all from a security perspective, he was backing us and supportive of that and helped us get the API published. So that set a precedent so that now when anyone else comes to us and says, I've got sensitive data, uh, my API is, is too powerful, it can do too much, uh, I can't risk it, we can lean on them because it's, it's the most dangerous API that we probably have at Cerner. Another common one was that my API doesn't have a swagger definition. Help, I don't even know what a swagger definition is. Uh, and just last night, I found out that uh, we had finished creating a video guide to helping people build swagger definitions. Uh, this is really common in my 600-person organization because it's a lot of vendor-provided solutions. Uh, out of the 300 that we have, probably 10 have a swagger definition. So there's a lot of, a lot of work that needs to be done there to enable those folks, and we're well on our way. One of the other ones was, I have a SaaS API. Should I publish it or not? And we're like, man, that's a really good question. Uh, our gateway is on-premise today. Uh, is, is going and publishing every single API that we have really the best idea? No, probably not. Um, if one of these SaaS APIs is going to get 50 million calls a day, are, are we in a position that we can support that from a platform perspective? So we worked with them, and we created some guidelines about when you publish and when you don't. And my favorite, no one is asking for my API. Why should I share it? Why should I publish it? And we got together with these folks, and we just explained the concepts of an API economy and, and why it was part of good corporate citizenship for them to be a part of this ecosystem and participate in the process. And that the ultimate goal of achieving enterprise agility and speeding us up as an organization. And we updated the program structure one more time. The far right pillar is only adoption, and it's whatever it takes to get adoption. There will probably be more things that we find that, that we haven't done or haven't done well. And we moved governance back to strategy. We kept learning, we kept evolving, and the program has changed over time, and that's OK. It has to. So if you build it and enable the people and have feedback loops, and spread the word, and iteratively evolve, they will come. These are the key takeaways. So again, remember that dev experience is the number one priority. Your APIs are a product. But it's not just their experience in the portal. It's, it's with the APIs themselves. It's in interacting with you. And in order to do that, you have to enable the people. They have to know how to be successful in this new world. It's the importance of feedback loops. So create adoption metrics and make sure you're meeting with people. There are things that the adoption metrics told us that people wouldn't have and vice versa. And then make sure that you're evaluating and evolving on those, putting that feedback back into your program and adjusting. And finally, spread the word. 
You know, we did not go into this um, building a team full of marketing folks. It's, it's engineers, and I know that's not what engineers are necessarily great at. My team, I, I'm very lucky, my team has taken to it very well, and, and we've been very successful in, in doing that. Um, but it can be a lot of fun as well. That's all I have. I, I know I had to go through a lot of the pieces here relatively quickly, uh, and that our time was limited today. I'll be at the network event uh, following the sessions today. Uh, here's my personal info, if you're interested in connecting with me outside of the conference, and then the two links that I promised. So I'd love to hear from you guys if, if you guys have feedback, feedback about the talk, about our program, uh, challenges that you guys are facing within uh, your program, either getting started or, or while you're in execution. And um, that's all I have. Thank you.